AutoSAR ECU software simulation is an ability to simulate the behavior of an ECU application software and basic software services in a PC-based environment like Simulink. This implies you are replacing the hardware with some form of emulation, which primarily helps in validating the software via modeling simulation. As you know, by using Simulink, you can easily model and simulate the application layer software components. Now the question is, can we model and simulate basic software services? The answer is yes. As you see, here, there are many basic software modules in the Odyssey architecture. We support Diagnostics Event Manager and NVRAM services in our recent releases. It really takes more time to read the bulky Odyssey documentation and understand the specification for this NVRAM Manager and Diagnostic services. So, we provide pre configured service callers and reference implementation blocks to simulate the behavior of the software. I have Durvesh, who is an application engineer at MathWorks, is here with me to show the demonstration on how to use the pre-configured basic software blocks in your Odyssey model. Sure, thank you, Shweta. Let me use an example of a model that I've created to implement a seatbelt reminder functionality to demonstrate this. The seatbelt reminder modules functionality is designed to read the ignition key and the seatbelt fasten sensor switch and provide an LED indication to the driver via the vehicle dashboard. If the seatbelt is unfastened with the ignition turned on, the LED switches on and vice versa. It also reads the vehicle speed to generate a blinking LED pattern once the vehicle speed crosses a calibratable threshold value and the seat belt is still unfastened. This model has four runnables, with the top runnable being the initialize and the terminate runnable, which implements the startup and shutdown behavior of an ECU. One of the common automotive requirements is to access the NVRAM memory during startup and shutdown events to read and write data blocks respectively. This can be easily done using the newly introduced pre-configured basic software blocks for the NVM manager available in the basic software library. For instance, in the initialize subsystem, I have used the NVM service caller block to read an NVM data block using the read operation. Apart from read, there are multiple other operations that can be invoked. Similarly, in the terminate subsystem, I have used the same NVM service caller block with the write operation. The emulation of this functionality is possible using the reference implementation of the NVM manager through this NVM service component block that is placed in the top level model to emulate the NVM manager's behavior. We also have the NVM admin caller to set block protection operation if required. On similar lines, we can also invoke a diagnostic event manager call like I've done to check the speed diagnostics inside Runnable 1. I use the, the diagnostic monitor caller block to invoke a set status operation for speed stuck low and similarly for speed stuck high based on the value of the speed coming in. The DEM event status type is a pre-configured enum definition that can be used directly for a DEM operation. To support the emulation of DEM, we have the diagnostic service component block placed at the top level and like the NVM manager, can be configured to emulate the DEM's functionality. Similarly, we also have Diagnostic Info Caller to fetch the status. The two signal lines that you see are called as the function connectors and assist in visually tracing the dependencies between the Simulink function callers and Simulink function blocks. 
Okay, can you show the RSR configuration for this model? Let me now show you how easy it would be to configure a Simulink model towards AutoSAR code generation using the recently introduced code perspective and the AutoSAR dictionary. The code perspective can be enabled by clicking on the bottom right icon to open up the perspective view. And when I click on code, I get three different windows. On the left, I have the Emmerich Coder Quick Help. Then I have the code mapping for AutoSAR. And on the right, I have the property inspector. The Emberic Coder Quick Help is a great starting point for you to read up about AutoSAR code generation inside the documentation. At the same time, it gives you some quick start menus where you can start mapping ports, mapping internal behavior, and also point you to the right direction inside the documentation. For the model that we have chosen, we have multiple tabs for the code mapping. We have inputs, outputs, entry point functions, data transfers, function caller, so on and so forth. For example, if under the inputs, I have all the inputs listed out with the data access mode and the AutoSAR port and AutoSAR element respectively for my selected input. Similarly, for outputs, entry point functions, data, data transfers for the IRVs, the function caller block and the lookup tables in case you have any. If I go back to my inputs and select key, you would see that the properties of key would be listed on the right hand side in the property inspector. This is a great view for me to understand all, all possible attributes associated with key, which will, which will help me view them as well as edit them at the same time. In this case, I can easily change the data access mode from implicit receive to explicit receive, and also edit the communication attributes that are, that are relevant for this particular receiver port. For example, here I change the alive timeout from zero to 10, and when I click on a live timeout, the value has changed from changed to zero to ten. I can further customize my model by opening the opening up the AutoSAR dictionary, and the interface for this is very similar to our previous versions. You can see that the multiple ports are listed under the atomic components uh, for the software component selected, and all the relevant AutoSAR attributes are visible to us. In this case, I've selected the data element communication attribute init value for sender port seat belt icon. Same is the case for receiver ports, and these are the same options that you saw in the perspective view. You can modify and edit any of these configurations here using the AutoSAR dictionary. Wow, this AutoSAR Coder dictionary looks really cool, and it makes it easy to configure in a single view. Okay, now it's time for me to show you the fun part. That's the simulation of the seatbelt reminder algorithm along with the basic software. As I explained before, the seatbelt reminders functionality is to inform the driver when the seatbelt is unfastened. When I move the ignition key to on, you can see that the LED has lit up as the seatbelt fasten switch is set to open. When I increase the speed beyond 15, which is the calibratable threshold, the LED blinks at a specified rate. When I fasten the seat belt, the LED switches off. This is the basic functionality. Now let's look at the basic software functionality. To do this, I have added an additional software component here called BSWRT Read. In this software component, I'm using the BSW service caller blocks to invoke the DEM service and the NVM service. In DEM, I fetch the failed status for client port speed stuck high and speed stuck low using the diagnostic info caller block. And fetch the ignition key switch count using NVM service caller block. All these three client ports are also used in my original application software component. I have mapped the outputs of these operations to the dashboard blocks here. Let's test the DEM service now. The speed stuck high event has been implemented to occur when the input speed value increases above 45. And speed stuck low is implemented when the speed value decreases below 5. Let's increase the speed value and see this. As you can see, when I increase the speed value beyond 45, the speed stuck high event failed. 
and when I decrease the value below 5, the speed stuck low event failed. Similarly, I have implemented a logic to lock the ignition key switch count using the NVM service caller block. You can see every time I move the ignition key, the counter increases as it reads the most recent value stored in the NVM. So there you go, Shweta, developing Autosar functionalities and performing Autosar ECU software simulation with Simulink and Embedded Coder is as simple as that. This is great. Now it is your time to try these new basic software services blocks. Thanks for watching.